Hey there, nation. Welcome to the show. We show you how to play a miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Chiefsgate, and it's time for another edition of Tales from the Underhive Battle Report number six. This one is a gang fight scenario between my two buddies, Warlord Ace, with his gang 911 from House Vansar, as well as Brother Grim with his gang, the Pelago Slam Kings of House Goliath. So, unfortunately for these two gangs, they have lost two of their uh, battles so far in the uh, campaign, so now they're going to be facing each other as well, just like how in the previous battle report uh, the two reigning champions fought it out. So, let's see what happens when House Van Star and House Goliath fight it out in the combat zone. Alright, so let's run down the roster for the Pelago Slam Kings. Leading them is a man named Bluebeard. He is armed with a massive axe, auto pistol, grenade launcher with frack, uh, frag, as well as crack grenades. After that we have Del Fuego. He is the gang's heavy armed with a flamer and auto pistol. After him we have Spam, who is a gang with an auto gun who is blinded in one eye. Cram, who is a ganger with armor with auto gun, who has a hand injury, as well as a body slam skill. Lamb, their new recruit, who is armed with is a ganger armed with a bolt gun. Next comes Ram, another ganger with a last gun and massive pistol. And then we have three Jews. Hammer Time, who is armed with auto pistol and a maul. No Bones Jones, armed with a stun gun, as well as dum dum bullets and a maul. And Shrimpy, who is armed with a stub gun, dub dum bullets, as well as a mob. And then running out his choice, he has Moss. He's a scummer that he hired up. The guy is armed with two dual last pistols, hot shot power pack. He's got the fast shot, killer rip, hip shooting, and quick witted uh, skills. That brings his grand, uh, grand total for his gang rating to 1,293 points. Alright, up next we have 911 of House Van Sar. Their leader's name is the Bullet Farmer. He's packing a bolt gun, bolt pistol, and sword. After that we have two heavies. Brother Heckler, he's armed with a flamer, last pistol, and he has an old battle wound, which he rolls successfully to take place in this battle. And after him we have Brother Nero, who's armed with a plasma gun, as well as a last pistol. Up for his gangers, he has Mecha, who's armed with a bolt gun, which is a new recruit. After him we have Junk Bolt, he's armed with a bolt gun, frag grenades, he's got the armor skill, and he's also partially deafened. And his last ganger is a man named Slim Sloan, who's armed with a Bolt pistol sword and has the eventer uh, special rule. After that, we have his three uh, Juves, Rune Dog, he's armed with two end stub guns equipped with silencers. He's got the gunfighter rule. Sands, who's armed with two stub guns, has the combat master skill. And the Nomad, who's armed with an auto pistol. And his gang rating is 1,289 points. Alright, so here's the battlefield that our gangs will be fighting on today. This is the combat zone. As you can see there, we have the uh, Park West Apartment, Eric View Apartments, located in the left-hand corner on the mirror side. We also got the office building located on the right-hand side. We got several craters as well as debris for flight blockers spread out throughout. We have MCI Chemical Works Compound that's located there in the center, uh, as well as to the left-hand side of the board in the middle. And in the far left corner, we got the Metropolitan Priest Apartment, Precinct 13. We also have Alexander's Department Store and the West Super Red. So let's go ahead and talk about the individual deployment zones for this one. Alright, so here's the deployment. As you can see, here's the Pelago Slam Kings. They're located on the near side of the board while Brother Grimm's, uh, sorry, not Brother Grimm's, while uh, my friend Warlord Ace has set up his 911 crew all the way across the other side of the uh, board. Uh, basically, it's a typical gang fight scenario. These guys have to fight it out until someone breaks and bottles out. So let's go ahead and go with the zoom ins on this part. Alright, so here's a close-up of the Pelago Slam Kings. As you can see on the left-hand side, you got Ram. Next to him, you have Cram, followed by Bluebeard, followed by Spam, so his gangers are there on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side, he's got Dofuego, as well as Lamb, who's the new recruit, as well as his new scummer, um, Bert, uh, Moss. The rest of his gang is heading up because my opponent, uh, my buddy, has a, uh, what you call, tunnels deployment rule, so because he's got three of his guys in reserve, uh, deployed at a later time, which is his three juves. So that makes the deployment for the Pelago Slam Kings. And here's deployment for 9-11. As you can see in the very front, we got the three Jews. We got Sands, the Nomad, as well as Rundog. Behind them, we got the two new, uh, the two gangers. We have uh, Junkbolt as well as Mecha. There's the new recruit for the 9-11 uh, crew. And then right behind him, you have their leader, the Bullet Farmer. Uh, the rest of his members of his gangs are also waiting in the sidelines because they're using tunnels deployment rules as well. So that is deployment for this gang. Here's a close-up of Brother Grimm's three Jews. You have Shrimpy, who's on the left-hand side. Behind him, you got No Bones Jones. And to the right, you got Hammer Time. So those guys are waiting on the sidelines using the tunnel special rules. And for 911, you have his two heavies as well as his gangers. So you have uh, Brother Nero, who's the guy on the left-hand side with his plasma gun. Behind them, you got the flamer packing. Uh, uh, Brother Heckler, he's sitting there with his uh, flamer in the back there. And the front, you got Slim Salon with his bolt pistol as well as his sword. And they're waiting because of the tunnel special rule as well. So with uh, deployments over, we go directly to the top of turn number one. All right, so here's the top of turn number one after movement with the Pelago Slam King is going first. As you can see, Brother Grimm just basically sent his entire gang uh, running uh, as quickly as they can towards the MCI Chemical Works. Uh, I believe what's happening is that Brother Grimm is going to try to occupy the cover positions at the MCI Chemical Works. That way he has a dominant position within the middle of the battlefield, and that way he can also set the tone of his engagement. So it's a pretty nice, aggressive move for the Goliaths uh, for the top of this turn. 
And because there's no shooting in this turn because everybody ran and there's no close combat, at the end of the turn, Brother Grimm manages to get his three Jews uh, out on deployment for the tunnel special rules. You can see there, he put all three of his Jews on the left-hand side of the MSCI Chemical Works and Occupy a cover position there to stop the uh, 9-11 crew from overrunning them into the MCI. So with uh, the uh, Plago Slam King's turn over with, we go directly to the t bottom of turn one for the 9-11. All right, so now it's time for turn number one at the bottom of turn number one after movement. As you can see there, uh, Warlord Ace sends up his three Jews, Rune Dog, Sands, as well as a Nomad. He runs them past the debris field, heading towards that tank farm there on the right-hand side of the MCI Chemical Works. And right behind them, he moves up his Ganger as well as his as Commander. He doesn't run those guys. He just only moves up the four inches. I think he's planning on using cover fire for those guys as well. So you can see on the left-hand side, you got Mecha. You got the Bullet Farm in the center. And then you got Junk Bolt on the right-hand side. So there they are with our movement phase. And... Uh, now we proceed down to the other phases. So without shooting or close combat, because most of the guys ran and they can't shoot anything, we go to the end of turn number one. As you can see on the left-hand side, Warlord Ace deploys his other three members of his gang as well. He's got Brother Nero there on the left-hand side, followed by Salem Sloan in the center, and he also has uh, Brother Heckler on the right-hand side, aiming his flamer down the middle of the uh, MCI Chemical Works compound. So with that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number two. All right, so this is the top of turn number two for the Pelago Slam Kings after movement. As you can see here, pretty much um, Brother Grimm sends his three Jews over the left-hand side, occupying that street as well as taking cover amongst that crater to start engaging targets down that main thoroughfare from 9-11. Uh, as you can see, the MCI Chemical Works as well. He climbs up the wall with Lamb. He's on the top of the MCI Chemical Works uh, wall as well. He also moves up four inches for the rest of his gangers, hitting inside the middle of the MCI Chemical Compound, while his boss, uh, Bluebeard, just kind of hangs back in the back and decides to uh, keep it safe uh, for him. Him. So that is moved for this side of the board. As you can see from the aerial shot that takes place in the MCI Chemical Works, Del Fuego takes point with his flamer. Right behind him, he has Spam and Cram, the two gangers armed with auto guns. And right behind them, you have Ram, who is the uh, red-headed... Uh, last gun wielding gang with a massive axe. You can see uh, Lamb is top to the climb of the top to the MCI Chemical Works wall. That way he can put some suppressive fire down on those three 9-11 uh, crew members on the other side of those tanks. And the far right-hand side, Moss kind of goes around and skirts the right-hand side to go in for a perfect flanking position of the 9-11 uh, crew. So with that uh, movement being over with, we go directly to the shooting phase. All right, in the shooting phase, both Lamb as well as Moss, as well as the members of the gangers that can shoot through the uh, tunnel work there, the, the tunnel work, the tower work there in the middle of the MCI Chemical Works, they open up on both those heavies. They shoot at uh, Brother Heckler as well as Brother Nero. Moss manages to land a uh, wound on top of Brother uh, uh, Brother Nero, so he drops that guy to the ground. Unfortunately for uh, uh, what you call it, unfortunately for. Um, Brother Grimm, he only managed to put him down for now. He's not out of action. And same thing with the other thing with Brother uh, Heckler on the top there. Lamb managed to hit him, but uh, I was unable to put him out of action. The guy was only down. Uh, unfortunately for Warlord Ace, his guy Slim Sloan broke his nerve and basically ran 2d6 inches into that crater, ran about 5 inches and decided to take cover by the crater, and he lost his nerve, and so that's what he'd be up for this side of the board. So uh, that makes him shooting on the right-hand side of the battlefield. All right, on the right-hand side of the battlefield, all three Jews from the Plago Slam Kings open up on that poor uh, Jew. His name is Sands. All three of them managed to hit him as well. They also, all three managed to wound him. So because of that, the poor Sands, the Jew from 9-11, hits the ground. Unfortunately for Warlord Ace, he rolled a six on that guy, so that poor guy goes out of action. And already the first blood goes to the Plago Slam Kings. So here's a close-up of the poor Jew, Sands. That guy is now out of action as well. So because of that, uh, one more uh, with two of those heavies being down as well as this guy being out of action, uh, Warlord Ace will have to start taking uh, bottle rolls from this point onward. All right, so that takes the top bottom of turn number two after movement because there's no shooting or close combat for the rest of turn two for the Pelago Slam Kings. And as you see here, there's definitely been some movement. Uh, both those uh, Jews, Rune Dog as well as a Nomad, they go ahead and run eight inches into the uh, MCI Chemical Works and start taking cover amongst the positions there. I'm sorry, they don't run. They move up four inches, rather, into that tank farm there, the MCI Chemical Works. And that way, Rune Dog can start shooting at the gangers there in the center of the MCI Chemical Works. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, the uh, two gangers as well as the Bullet Farmer decides to stay exactly where they are and remain protective care detective cover and the debris field there. So that's moving on this side of the board. In the shooting phase, Rune Dog takes aim with both the stone guns and manages to drill Dil Fuego and drop him to the ground. Unfortunately for um um, for Warlord Ace, uh, he didn't roll a 6 on that part, so because of that, Del Fuego's only down for the moment, so that's why he's got a yellow die next to him. The only other real benefit, however, is that Spam basically loses his nerve and freaks out and dies behind that water tank, so that way he won't be shooting anybody either. So the Flamer guy is now down, and another ganger is basically broken, so that's shooting on this side of the board.
On the other side of the battlefield, Junk Bolt takes aim with his bolt gun and manages to put uh, Shrimpy down on the ground as well. So he is down for this turn. Unfortunately for him, though, Junk Bolt rolled a six in order to hit, so he has to take an ammo roll, and he fails his ammo roll check because bolt guns, as we all know, have to have a six up for the ammo roll. So now his bolt gun is absolutely useless. The only thing he can really do now is his lot of frag grenades. Uh, so that's kind of a downer for uh, Warlord Ace. However, as a consolation prize, both Hammer Time as well as No Bone Jones lose their nerve and they both break as well, and they go opposite directions down the street, taking high, uh, taking cover positions behind to the two buildings of the MCI Chemical Works, and leaving their friend Shrimpy there on the ground bleeding out. So, uh, with shooting phase over, there is no close combat phase, so we go directly into the recovery phase for 9-11. As you can see in the rubber recovery phase on the right hand side on the right hand side of the MCI Chemical Works, Brother Heckler manages to get back up with a flush wound. So now he's minus one to hit with his uh, weapon skill as well as for his blister skill as well. Which shouldn't be too much of a problem because that guy's armed with a flamer, so it shouldn't be really be a problem for my buddy Warlord Ace. However, Brother Nero, the plasma gun packing uh, heavy, he was unable to uh, get back up because so he's still down. So he crawls two inches back towards the Mia uh, to the craters there where Slim Slow is located at. Slim Slow regains his uh nerve basically so the guy turns around to face his opponents and because a quarter of my uh, a quarter of uh, warlord aces gangs are down he has to take a bottle test lucky for him he passes bottle test so 911 sticks out for another round so with that being said we go to the top of turn number 3 so this is the top of turn number three for the Pelago Slam Kings after movement. As you can see, there has been some major development taking place within the Metro, uh, in the, uh, metro Chemicals Industries MCI Chemical Works facility. As you can see, uh, Ram, who's the red-headed uh, ganger armed with the axe, last gun, he climbs up to the top of that tank and it takes up positions there, while his leader, Bluebeard, also climbs the wall and kind of decides to stick on the top of the wall as well. On the right-hand side, Cram, the ganger with the auto gun, climbs up the water tower, takes positions there in the cover for, uh, covering position, and uh, Land decides to move to the top of the uh, tanks there on the right hand side and Moss moves up four inches as well to start engaging uh, Slim Sloan near those craters. So that's movement on this side of the board. During the shooting phase, Ram opens up with his last gun. Same thing with Cram. They both shoot at uh, the gang on the left-hand side, whose name is Mecha. Uh, basically, they managed to put him down as well. Unfortunately for them, they didn't put him out of action. He is just down currently, so that's why he's got the yellow dice next to him. While Bluebeard opens up with a grenade launcher on both Rundog as well as a Nomad with his uh, frag grenades right there in the center portion of the board. Unfortunately for Bluebeard, he only managed to put down uh, the Rundogs. He didn't put him out of action, and the... Uh, Nomad as well. He also passes his brake check for his nerves, so he's not pinned. He's still sticking it out right there on the chemical tanks. Uh, so that makes him shooting for this side of the board. Without any hand combat that's taking place during this turn, we go directly to the recovery phase. As you can see, no bow Joe's regains his nerve. However, uh, Hammer Time over there in the far uh, top of the screen there, he does not. He continues to run another 2d6 inches, and he's getting dangerously close to the edge of the board. So Hammer Time is still on the run. Unfortunately for Shrimpy, he's still down, so he's just laying there bleeding, and he managed to move another 2 inches closer to that uh, crater there. In the center of the MCI Chemical Works, Spam regains his nerve, so now he can start moving and shooting during his next turn as well. Unfortunately for Brother Grimm, Del Fuego did not survive his wounds. He is out of action. He rolled a 6, so that guy is now going to take a roll on the serious injury table. Here's a close-up with Del Fuego, uh, kind of like just resting in peace right now because he ran out of action. So this guy's at the roll-up on the serious injury table. So with no more recovery taking place, we go directly to the bottom of turn number 3, 4, 9, 11. All right, so this is the top of, bottom of turn number three, four, nine, eleven. After move phase, as you can see, Slim Slim basically jumps into another crater, so that way he gets a closer position, and still remain cover to open up on Moss, which is the scummer there on the on the top of the screen there as well. Uh, basically, the rest of his gang on this side of the board, they basically just stay and maintain the locations at where they're at. In the movement phase here in the MCI Chemical Works, uh, the Nomad basically charges up those uh, tanks. So during the movement phase, he runs up those movement tanks and charges and engages and charges directly into RAM. So those two guys will be engaging in close combat on this turn. So that makes a movement on this side. So with movement finished, we go directly on to the shooting phase. And poor Warlord Ace, this shooting phase is like one of the worst shooting phases we have ever witnessed in the game of campaign for Nicomundo so far. So we'll start off with, uh, we'll start off with uh, poor Slim Sloan. Slim Sloan shoots at Moss, manages to hit him, however he also fails to wound him, but when he rolled to hit him, he rolled a 6, which means he has to take an ammo check. And because bolt guns are at a 6-up ammo check, um, 
Slim Sloan fails his ammo roll, so now he has no weapons to shoot with for the rest of the remainder of the battle. As you can see there, Moss survives his uh, wound attempt. However, he is now pinned because uh, he failed his leadership death for being shot at. On the right-hand side there, Brother Heckler opens up with his flamer, hits Lamb. However, he also fails a wound, fly, wound Lamb, or also set that guy on fire, so that guy is basically okay. However, he does fail his leadership test, and so now he is pinned to the top of those tanks. But because uh, my opponent uh, has to take a roll every single time that he uses uh, his flamers, uh, he feels his ammo roll too, so now Brother Eckler's flamer is out of commission as well. So that's shooting on this side of the board for 911. So on the right-hand side of the battlefield, the bullet farmer takes aim with his bullet gun and shoots at Cram, who was the uh, Goliath King, who was at the top of the water tower in the MCI Chemical Works. He manages to hit him as well as to wound him. The guy also falls off the water tank and also takes an impact hit from hitting the ground as well, which is great. However, the bullet farmer rolled a six to hit, so because he has to take an ammo roll as well, and he has to get a six up in order to get that, he fails his ammo roll as well, so now his bullet gun is out of commission as well. So that's right, ladies and gentlemen, you have three ammo roll, ammo roll fails taking place in the same shooting phase. These poor gangs, man, they have like no luck whatsoever, so Warlord Ace begrudgingly just kind of accepts the losses, and uh, that pretty much rounds up the shooting phase for this one. Here's a close-up of Cram, who was the Goliath that got shot by the bullet farmer. As you can see there, he also got shot off the ledge. He also hit the ground as well, but unfortunately for Warlord Ace, uh, he basically put him down is what he did. He didn't take him out of action, so that guy is still kind of alive and kicking. So with that being said, we go directly into the combat phase. You can see on the right-hand side, uh, the Nomad is charged into Ram, so let's see what happens with combat on that part. In the combat phase, the Nomad just ruled out of the box for his close combat. Managed to put three wounds onto Ram the Ganger, so Ram basically goes out of action for that part. And using the follow-up rules, the, nom uh, the Nomad then charges directly into uh, Bluebeard the Ganger on top of the MCI chemical wall. So, unfortunately for my opponent, however, um, he had to do with the recovery phase. So during the recovery phase, he was willing for his gang members. Some of his guys went out of action. Some of his guys were remained down. But when it came to his bottle test, he failed his bottle test, and that led to the end of the game. So there you are, folks, at the end of the game, 9-11 uh, bottled out, so because of that, that gang loses this scenario while the Pelago Slam Kings won. We also have to roll now for serious injury tests and go right to the post-game part. So let's go and talk about the after-action report, because this battle report is now over. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Alright folks, now it's time for the after action report. This is the part of the battle report where we talk about what went well, what went poorly, and what we can learn for the next time that we do uh, battle reports again later on. This is the after action report for Tales of the Underhive Battle Report number 6 gang fight scenario between Warlord Ace with his 9-11 gang of House Vansar versus Brother Gim of the Pelago Slam Kings of House Goliath. So let's go ahead and talk about the post game. The Pelago Slam Kings were the winners in this scenario, however, when it came to the injuries, Del Fuego, the heavy rolled up dead for his injuries, Shrimp began an old battle wound, and Ram also to suffered a partially deafened roll, so because of that, he takes a minus one to his initiative. It was during this time that uh, my bro my buddy brother Grim looked at his gang and realized that almost all of his gang members, uh, about a good third of them, have died over the process, and that their gang rating is just going to get lower and lower and lower. He decides to disband this gang, and he decides he's going to start with their whole new, brand new gang, and basically start from scratch with the new ones. So that is his right; he can do that during the campaign. So brother Grim has decided to put down the Palago Slam Kings and replace it with a whole new gang, uh, and decided to try. Again. Again with, uh, trying again. Uh, same thing happened with my uh, my buddy Warlord Ace with his 9/11. 9/11 crew lost, and during the injury rolls, Rune Dog made a full recovery. However, Brother Miro as well as Mecha, who was heavy as well as his ganger, they both died as well. And following the same suit that uh, Brother Grim took, Warlord Ace decides to expand his gang as well and to start to scratch with a new one as well. So we have seen the end of both 9/11 as well as the Palago Slam Kings. Uh, what gangs my buddies are going to take up next, we really don't know. So uh, because of that, we'll be developing new gangs. For those guys later on down the line so yeah that pretty much makes up this really tragic battle report for battle report number six for both the Pelagos land kings and 911 both of those games were broken from this battle report and they're now out of the campaign but to turn a new leaf over we will be seeing some brand new games taking place within the campaign later on because of this so it'll be kind of exciting so once again feel free to comment like and subscribe as well if you have any comments or complaints put them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you guys because we love the interaction with these guys so having fun with these battle reports having fun with the campaign i love playing against my opponents using this game i forgot how much fun nirkamunda is and we're just gonna keep on rocking it okay you guys you stay classy out there planet earth we'll see you on the next one